Good afternoon. How are you? Very good, thank you. Where in the world are you? I'm in the UK. How about yourself? Yeah, we're in Manchester. Ah, you're Nick and Caroline Robertson Brown. Jenny's been telling me about you. Uh, not Jenny. Jane's been telling me about you. Tourism right. Fiji. Okay. Tourism Fiji. Oh, fantastic! Yes. Hello. So yes, we've been. We were supposed to talk to Jane at midday. I'm not really sure what happened, but ah, uh, okay. Um, we'll have to catch up with her at some point. So, how's no the show been going for you? Look, I'm figuring it out just like everyone else is, right? Yeah. Um, interesting times. I was running a resort in Fiji up until coronavirus, and came back to the UK as a result of Corona. Um, and now I'm here. <laughs> So which island? Where were you in Fiji? I've lived and worked on quite a few. I've actually been going in and out of Fiji now for about almost 17, 18 years. Oh, um, wow. I've got a daughter Fantastic. who goes to school out there right now. So I'm, I'm quite well invested in uh, Fiji. Yeah. Um, Jane, obviously, we've, we've been in touch for years and she sort of she sort told of me about this episode. Uh, um, uh, and I put my hand up and said I'd love to help out if, if I can, you know. Great. OK, that's fantastic. Well, we, we did one trip to Fiji, didn't we, about three at least three years ago now i would say um unfortunately we had quite a storm <laughs> brewing all yeah. of the time that we were there there was an anti-cyclone all the time yeah. we were there oh, wow. um, we got we got but it was amazing we got enough yeah. photos yeah. when was yeah. that how many years ago i think four. three years ago or four years ago it was just it wasn't the year of the big uh i'm not hurricane Winston, Winston. Yeah. yeah Winston. it was the year after that yeah that was a big one so what's so your main thing is frogfish obviously underwater photography video yes that's right we're underwater photography we're photojournalists so we write for um, a magazine called dive travel adventures mm -hmm. and um i'm the deputy editor nick's the underwater photography editor of scubaverse which is an online dive magazine as well so oh, yeah. we, we do shoot a little bit of video but it's underwater stills is our our main nice is there just excuse my ignorance but are we just talking to each other right now or is there other people there are there are, appear to be four people i think so a couple of other people hello other people we can't has anyone got a question we can't see the other people can we no but every, it's their choice as to whether they turn on their cameras or video oh, so that's I, why so i had i had the most annoying day yesterday with tech issues all day long um, yeah, we had a few yesterday as well. Hi, Tessa. Uh, good to see you. I jumped Sorry, online. a little chat. I got online last night and finally got the everything working properly and then literally went straight into a live cross feed to a marine biologist in Fiji who raved for about an hour about marine biology. And it was awesome. But it was just one of those straight off the diving board into the deep end moments. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We've had a few technical issues today. Uh, what our first session was on about on shark diving in the Bahamas. And that started, I think, nearly 15 to 20 minutes late. So we're running a bit behind at the moment. Nice. Tessa, hi, have you got any underwater photography question for us? Or are you just going to listen in on the chat? Well, somebody said yesterday's talk. <laughs> <laughs> well, she can type her question. Are you an underwater photographer, Elliot, yourself? Or? Uh, well, look, to give you a little, little brief story on that. So I'm technically a paddy dive master, SSI instructor, have been involved in photography over the years, absolutely. Um, at one point was running around Fiji, giving birth, so to speak, to a travel magazine um, back in 06, 07. Um, that's how I met Jane. Um, I was self-publishing that for a number of years, distributing it all over the place in the print media space. Um, so I have been involved in print particularly, not so much online. Um, no, I've got a good good head around my, on my shoulders as far as that's concerned. I've got a Canon 5D at the moment. Um, okay. Don't have an underwater housing for it at this exact moment in time, Ooh. unfortunately. But it's on the it's on the to do list for sure. Well, when you, you get in touch with us, we're free advice, and we do sell kit as well. But no, free advice. Absolutely, there it is. <laughs> Tessa said she just wants to sit and listen. Yeah. Um, do you, would you like us to talk about how we basically shoot? sharks in the caribbean where you've got a very bright floor and how we overcome that let me go and get our camera system so you can have a look what we shoot with yeah 100 percent. yeah i mean one of the uh, there, are, there are two ways of photographing sharks in well more than that obviously but two two main ways one is sort of in mid-water and um, but a lot of the time 
when you're going <laughs> when you're going down to look for sharks, um, in order to get sharks to come in, love it or hate the whole idea, you need to, you need to be able to bait them normally with offcuts from restaurants, bits of fish, and the likes. And that will bring the sharks in. So you've got the sharks there. Once you've got them there, it's a case of how do you get your shot? Mm -hmm. A lot of the time, I say they'll come low over the floor. So we need to, with this thing here, obviously... I this is not light, by the way. <laughs> and guys, 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 guys just, just to let you know, I don't know if you've seen this, but Tessa has just written in the chat. Yeah, she wants to do the small stuff. Well, yeah, we'll do that in a minute. Okay. We'll get to that. Um, I want... So if you're going to shoot and you've got sand, white sand down here, you'll just get loads of reflection back. So lift these up. Still have them pointing out, still do everything else, but that's the first thing to, to think about. Um, secondly, we are in wide angle. It's the only way really to photograph these things. I use a fisheye. You can get away with them. Um, and I use a... I'm going to put this down now because it's really heavy. <laughs> so... I use a no, do I use, use a, a sixteen mil lens. I use yeah. a sixteen mil, which is that's on a full frame. So, um, if you want me to work out what the equivalents are, we can do that. Tessa, so, so can you let us know what camera you're using? It would help us talk about macro uh, a little bit to mm -hmm. to what you're doing. But I mean, macro photography a lot of the time is about having a great guide. <laughs> you know, the first step is finding someone who can find the stuff for you. Uh, we're both knocking on a bit now. Um, no, you're not. Yeah, really, we are. Now, in the old days, I used to find stuff no problem at all. And now I'm like, you, you, in the early, early 30s, 20, 27, 28. Yeah, yeah thanks right. very much for that. <laughs> that's, that's just me. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then um, I, I would say, a Fiji, and no, that's not embarrassing. There's nothing embarrassing about that. You know, we're professionals. We have to have these big rigs. I would much rather be carrying around a small camera. And for macro, a lot of the time, you know, you can get a smaller camera into a small space without, obviously, we some spaces we can't get into because we might damage the coral and we'd never do that. So, you know, reasonable lot, snaps is, I'm sure, what... On a lot of the dives where, you know, we're probably looking to go wide angle, but I'll often have this, which is the TG5, so it's good 15 meters, I think, um, in my pocket. And in the Bahamas, unless you're gonna go hanging off walls, 15 meters is absolutely fine. So don't feel embarrassed. This is- <laughs> That's what we use. Um, the top tips for macro photography, mine would be look at your background. So once you've found your subject, Think about what your background's going to look like, because a lot of the time, if you're shooting down or against some scrubby coral, not very nice coral, that ruins the photo, even if you've got a fantastic, bright, nudie brank. If you can drop down lower, and sometimes it's just simply not possible for the environment, but if you can drop down and, and shoot out into the water, uh, even up a little bit, um, then you're going to really help your photos. So that would be, you know, my number one top tip. I don't know what next will trigger around no, looking I just for. was going to get a little bit coral, but it doesn't matter. Have you got any lights, Tessa? Because again, um, you know, having some artificial light, even if it's your buddy holding a torch and pointing it at the uh, subject, um, that can really help again, you know. Um, no camera is designed to work underwater. Um, so the closer you can get to your subject, reducing that amount of water in front of your lens, the better. And then adding some artificial light really, really helps too. How much experience has Tessa got? Like how, much, how many guys have you got behind you, Tessa? Sorry, random question from the floor. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's all good. Everyone asking questions is good. Um, using flash, if you're just using the internal flash, put a diffuser in front of it. Um, and again, you need to be really close to your subject for it to have any effect. If you get an external light, brilliant, you've got a diffuser. Use that. If you can get an external light, or as I said, just have someone shining a torch, just make sure it's not shining straight into the blue because that'll light up all the bits of crap in the water. 
excuse my language. Yeah, if you can, if you can get a, a power a, a light, more powerful the better. But remember, with macro, if you're really in close, it's not so much, it's not so much of an issue because you can get your light in there. But in poorer visibility, if you've got your light pointing directly at your subject over the camera, you will get backscatter. If you tip it away so that the beam is like 30 to 45, 50 degrees away from your subject, but the, um, the side is still clipping your subject, that's what you're kind of trying to do when it's tricky. But in good viz with macro, Actually, you can just stuff the lighting wherever you want to do. You can do side lighting for black backgrounds, back lighting. Just for macro, once you start to find, um, feel comfortable, start playing with your lights. It's it's great fun. And if you've got a pool somewhere where you can get in there yeah. and put stuff in there, practice in a pool. And practicing in a pool, um, I think from our experiences, we're sort of on the committee of the Northern Underwater Photography Group. And those that have come on really quickly are those that have managed to get themselves into a pool and do some practicing. Yeah, if you're only doing it once a year and expecting yourself to be as good as you were at the end of the dive trip last year, that's not going to happen. You need to practice in between your diving trips. So it depends, you know, if you're not diving all the time like we are apart from this year um then then you need to practice <laughs> bowl of nuts is that that's a perfect thank you very much no, help yourself <laughs> thank you very nice but, uh, on saying that that is a perfect subject you know the peanut in your bowl of nuts is a perfect way of practicing your nudibranch photography it doesn't have to be underwater you can do it above water too Anyone else listening got a question? We're quite yeah. happy to carry on talking to Tessa about macro, but if there's anyone with a question, please turn on your audio or write it down. Well, Go on, Elliot. On. <laughs> it's not a question as such, but all this talk of flash has just reminded me of an amazing experience I had probably 10 years ago now in Fiji. I was doing a night dive um, with a couple of guests there at Vomo Island Resort, which is a nice place. And uh, there was a beautiful lightning storm happening up there. It wasn't happening when we started the dive, but it happened while we were down. And we looked into this sort of cave. It was only seven or eight meters deep, wasn't very deep at all. I looked into this sort of cave and saw, I don't know, probably at least 10 or 15 sharks, little reefies just hanging out in there. But of course, I don't know, they started to come out. And then every time there was a lightning, uh, lightning strike above, like a sheet lightning, obviously we could see everything and then it was black again mm. the sharks progressively came out and on one lightning flash there was one shark and then another lightning flash there was three and then another lightning flash there was seven oh. and it was really cool well, what do you think made them I think react we, like I, that I think they weren't being hostile or anything i think we just no. um, we just saw them in there and probably shone a light in to to see what was in there and, and woke them up i guess and they started yeah. to sort of just come out um honestly it was just one of those memorable moments yeah, I bet. It sounds fantastic. Um, we were just doing a talk on shark diving in the Bahamas and one of their sessions is um, Caribbean reef sharks on a wreck at night. And that's absolutely stunning, you know, just moving your torch around and then there's a shark and trying yeah, to get yeah. a photo of it. It's, it's really it's good. It's actually bonkers. Yeah. It's great. <laughs> it's black and the shark will just go past you. It's and great. again, that you know, one of your best photos is actually another diver using a big light lighting up a shark so you know it's not always your own lights that are the ones that make the difference sometimes having a buddy who knows what they're doing uh photographically really helps as well and i'm, 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 I'm going to get one one day oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. what's your best um you know one of those magic shots that you didn't necessarily plan to take that you just got just just out of the blue sort of thing wow. I um i think for me there's one of nick uh let me see if i can quickly share it i don't know whether i'm going to be able to do that so though, it's so. opportunity opportunistic and that some of the times we think about the shots we want to do beforehand and that and that's not just with the wide angles so that's also macro i'll jump onto we, this one we actually have um ideas of what we want to go for and that's what we'll go and look for um and quite often you'll miss other stuff, but in, in many ways, I mean, I'm a big advocate. If you're going to go diving, don't use a zoom lens, use a fixed um, 
lens so that when you're down there, if you've got a wide angle lens, you're looking for the big stuff. And if you've got a macro lens, you're looking for the small stuff. And mm -hmm. I think I can seriously say without actually having to do a scientific study on it, if I've gone with a macro lens on looking for macro, it's a far better return than if I had a zoom lens where I couldn't quite decide which one I wanted to go for. That's just my personal thought on that one. It works. It works. Sounds good. I think so. But yeah, no, I mean, there, there's one accidental image that um, we can only tell you about because I'm not going to be able to find it in time. But um, there was, we were on a macro dive in Indonesia and uh, we were swimming along and we were both focused on yeah. taking black background mm -hmm. Um, images of macro um, and our guide finned past a bit of coral and he didn't touch the coral with his fins but the zoom, the vortex, the vortex or whatever of water whooshed a species of nudibranch that we've never seen before Generalist. into the water, the, the bright purple spiky nudibranch and we were both in the perfect camera settings to get a black background of this nudibranch. So that was I mean, a that was fight a, over who could get the We were elbowing right? each other out of the way to try and uh, to try and get it. So, but again, there's uh, lots of other things. Um, sometimes you, you sort of um, are trying to know the shots you want. And I had, I had one shot where I wanted to get shots of a shark shown at the end of a shark dive, which, which I managed to get. But other times you can go down and suddenly things happen and you get the shot. And if you can actually be ready to get a shot when you, when something happens, um, it can be really quite rewarding. I know what you mean. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to get the image up on another laptop to show it, but it's not that, that I think the technology has beaten us basically. No, don't worry, we're all figuring it out as we go along here. This is great. Absolutely. Uh, and, and now it's messing with the audio. Has anyone else got a question? I've seen a couple of other people enter the room. Has anyone got a question on underwater photography of any type? Or is everyone just stalking out there? The reason I asked the question earlier to Tessa, I know she's listening, um, about how much diving you've got behind you is because I've always found that buoyancy control, as in your own buoyancy control, is absolutely paramount with photography. It's, um, it's the case that I, I've done quite as much now, but I've done a lot of teaching. People come here, but I will, if they haven't got 100 dives into their belt, i will say, please come back when you've done 100. Um, Maybe not a hundred, but yeah, you know, you you need them to be really comfortable with their buoyancy, not not have to think about it, basically. Yeah, yeah. at least a hundred. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it is, isn't it? If you're not comfortable, I mean, even even the best occasionally sort of get pushed into the reef one way or another, and it's how you deal with it as well, which is a lot of it. You know, if you can. If you find yourself getting into trouble, if you can breathe your way out and use buoyancy to get yeah. out, far better than trying to yeah. grab hold of something. Oh, there you go. Uh, Tessa says she's done 360 dives, a mixture of UK and warm water. Well, then you're a pro. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, you only have to do 20 dives if it's UK. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if you can dive in a dry suit, you're good to go. Yeah. 95, um, 95, 95 is that my diving thankfully has been in, in tropical environments. Um, yeah, I think 95% of my diving is going to be in tropical <laughs> environments after this now. Um, yeah. But you know, the UK offers some amazing photographic opportunities. Um, we have just had to cancel, unfortunately. Last weekend we were supposed to be in the Farn Islands photographing the grey seals. Um, but our accommodation was all shared accommodation. And so we had to, on um, COVID grounds, cancel it until, well, postpone it till next year, so. Mm. I know that Jane oh, has mentioned to me earlier today or yesterday that she'd love to have you guys at some point in the not too distant future come out to Fiji. Um, we were, we'd had all the paperwork all done and signed and ready to go. Um, and then obviously this hit this year, we were hoping to go this year, so. Yeah. We just have to hope that, you know, this all clears up and we're, because we'd love to go back to Fiji, get some good weather. I, I can't well, imagine anything better. There are some other shots I that I wanted to get that, that we didn't get, 
because the conditions were just not good enough. Well, on, on the bull shark dive, we, we got five minutes in the water and then they went, no, this is dangerous. You know, the visibility got down to an arm's length and they were just like out all of these. Was, was that the one at the Towers or which one was that? The Beckway. Yeah, you'll be pleased to know that I've got a, because I was working and living out there till about March time, um, a few of my Fijian friends right now literally are staying in those spots, um, keeping the sharks, you know, making sure the sharks are still there. Still hang around, yeah. yeah um, because obviously at the moment the borders are closed. Yeah. Um, mm. which would make it a bit difficult for everybody. Yes. Um, but obviously it's about knowing when and if the borders open again, you know, that everything is still there. Exactly, you know, and I think lots of people are going to have this this issue, isn't it? Diving is going to be different in the locations that we go back to. Hopefully, you know, the reefs, I mean, in Fiji's case, the reefs are in, in an impeccable condition anyway. But, you know, in places in the world where that's not necessarily the case, you hope that this break that they've had from dive boats and tourists will will have done some good at least oh, oh, yeah. we did a we did a cross last night which was moments after my video feed and everything started working properly which was amazing uh and i jumped straight into a video feed with rob who's a british guy who's working yeah, yeah. apparently yeah. as a as a um mentor research biologist yes. sort of thing. um and he knows a lot and he was saying on one hand it's been fantastic because without the tourists coming through um he's been able to focus on his sole mission, which is to tag and research yeah. manta rays, and he doesn't have to worry about the, <laughs> the guests, but obviously yeah. it's the guests who are the lifeblood of the economy, essentially. So it's it's a real interesting balance, and I'm sure it's the same for all, a lot of destinations that have similar, you know, similar setups. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. So when are you gonna house that camera of yours? When are you, <laughs> Next when, when are you sending me a housing? <laughs> Tell you what, I'd, I'd be upgrading to the D850 if I could afford a new housing. So. It's just that, I mean, the nightmare of it is when you upgrade your camera, you have to upgrade the housing as well. So you just know, you know, it's not feasible to keep upgrading the camera. Hopefully, uh, as, soon, hopefully <laughs> as soon as possible. To be honest, I got to a point with diving where it sounds really arrogant and, and snobbish, I suppose, but I got to a point where you've taken so many introductory divers on introductory dives and looking after all their boy, you know, looking after them effectively. <laughs> that when I first picked up a camera and just started playing around with a camera underwater, I thought this is great. You know, this is why I actually started diving. Mm -hmm. because I yeah. um, and I went on this journey into underwater photography and then one for one reason and another, so I haven't, haven't kept up with it over the years, which is a shame. I'd love to get back into it. I really would. So have you done any UK? Are you a UK diver? Have you done any UK diving? Never dived in the UK. Okay. Well, it's something to do while you're stuck here. I would to go off and get a dry suit course done and because there is some great diving here and you can practice your underwater photography while you're at it. It's freezing. It's not that. It's all about what you're wearing, not about the three, course. Three weeks ago, we were right up on the northwest coast of Scotland at Ullapool. The water was 11 degrees. We actually dived in a wetsuit. We were diving in wetsuits. Blimey. I used just to normal wear, five mils. I used to wear a wetsuit on a night dive, not just only really because you're cold when you get out of the water. You know, the rest of the time it was just rashies and, yeah. and a board, and mm. board shorts. Absolutely. Um, no, I've never worn a dry suit, to be honest. I've never put one on. Um, well, the water's currently off Cornwall about 11 as well, according to Tim Standing, and it's, it's similar up there on the West Coast. I think the East Coast is a bit cooler, but West Coast, you can do it in a five mil. Mm. Anyway. Yeah. I'm not. Go on, do it. <laughs> do you do, um, so with your photography, it's your business, right? What do you... Uh... Is it like you're just freelance sort of thing or how? how what no, no. So um, I'm deputy editor, Nick's photo editor of Scubaverse and Dive Travel magazine. Oh, that's right. Um, that's right. So, uh, so that's sort of one aspect of it. We do do freelance work as well. A lot of the work we do is for tourist boards, um, promoting various destinations. Mm -hmm. uh, we teach underwater photography. We sell underwater photography equipment. But those latter two things are not really of much, you know, they're, they're not big sections of our lives, I have to say. Mm -hmm. 
Well, you do, yeah. in order to be able to scrape a living at it in this country. You kind of have to do everything. Everything within that field. We've written four books. Um, so, yeah, it's a little, a little bit of uh, everything is, is the only way to go. I understand. Oh, oh it's the creative oh, industry story again. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, it's it's been tough in COVID times as well. You know, not we haven't been able to travel, which is the usual way that we would write our articles. So instead, we found ourselves snorkeling in Scotland to write a feature about that um, rather than diving with sharks in the Bahamas. I know which I'd rather be doing. But Scotland was fabulous. And you just mm. you have to just yeah go where where you can have you done much in terms of i know it's possibly a little bit off subject but i became aware a year or two ago of a i think it's in germany there's a, a guy there maybe austria i'm not sure who essentially gets in and out of a warm pool every day um with couples and pregnant mm -hmm. ladies and and kids and all sorts and does photo shoots in a pool and people come to the pool and they yeah. photo shoot in the pool is that something you have done or would could think of doing um, we've done we've um, dogs we've done yeah, dogs we've in done a hydrotherapy dogs. pool that we used to do that every now and then but We're, dogs are so much nicer than yeah. humans so um yeah. we Not have really. done models <laughs> um we've done a series of model shoots for for models that want to improve their portfolio and have underwater images of themselves we've done a bit of that yeah. and we did the 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 best one of the of that sort of ilk of photography is we did the big poster campaign for the paralympics um with three of the athletes in a pool which is an amazing shot you'll have to just dig it out from but somewhere and, but, and yeah. we were paid sort of half decent money for that yeah that was a big big shoot yeah so a lot of the time, the health, the health and safety rules in the UK uh, mean that you have to have um, surface support, two people in the water. You know, if you're making money with underwater photography, then you can't yeah, just one person go into the pool and photograph people. That's against the law. So you have to have a safety diver and surface support. So three members of staff. Um, and it becomes very expensive for the people wanting the the photos, all those three members of staff have to have HSE medicals, um, mm -hmm. pool hire on top. It, you know, it becomes unrealistic unless you're doing it all the time. I noticed with I noticed drones in New Zealand, everyone in New Zealand just bought a drone and started flying their drones. But here, you know, you've got to have civil aviation authority approval and... Yeah, yeah we've got that. Yeah. We, we have <laughs> got that. And, but there's so many places in the world where you can't take your drones. And then, so we bought a drone all excited about the beautiful beach shots that we'd be able to do in the Caribbean and and so many islands you have to either get a license before you go which is nearly impossible um, or they simply don't allow drones at all so Cuba you went to no drone Barbados don't allow drones uh, you know so actually we spent all this money on a drone and have barely taken it anywhere since we got it but but we fly it here have and it's got a nice Hansel Black camera. Nice. Have you, have you ever done much in terms, I'm just thinking logistical question here, in terms of using, you know, say like underwater scooters and camera gear and trying to like manage the physical aspects of how, yeah. using, you know, manipulating equipment yeah. essentially underwater. Any, um, any tricks on uh, tricks on that on that level? It would ha uh, it would have to be fixed. We did sort of kind of yeah. have a go at what we did. Well, this with this was the sea dogs are they the called? Sea, yeah, really, something. really fast yeah. these things. So you know you can't even hold a camera because it'll yeah. just um, be ripped out of your hand. The, the camera needs to be somehow mounted onto the scooter. You, there's just no way of holding a proper big scooter and your big camera like that. Separately, yeah. it, it's it's yeah, yeah, it's a recipe for things yeah. to go wrong, definitely in my opinion. And and for us, really, our underwater photography is done in shallow, if we can get away with it, shallow water, uh, nice, easygoing conditions to give yourself that time to focus on the photography without putting yourself in any danger. You know, that's you know, obviously we do. You know, we're qualified down to forty, and we're both instructors. Um, we're both SSI master instructors, but um, but because the photography takes up so much of your brain space, we prefer to keep it, you know, shallow and easy, uh, so that we're focusing on the photography rather than the diving. Yeah, yeah. I noticed uh, uh, this year too with introductory divers coming along, you know, being nervous and all the rest of it, but mm. having a GoPro on a stick. 
and yeah. getting very distracted by the camera. Yeah. And I often have yeah. been thinking to myself in my mind, is it good to have intro divers, you know, holding a camera or is it better off? I know they want to capture the experience, but yeah. should they be allowed I, a camera? I would say the instructor should capture the experience where I go on the mask or something so that they can give something, you know, back to those people or sell it to them even better to make a bit of an extra wage out of uh, what you're doing because editing takes time, but um, rather safe. than letting them have it. And we know how well paid dive guides are. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I, I think that's a really, you know, I wouldn't let uh, intro divers, open water, students, anything like that, no, have, no. A, have a GoPro on a stick or a camera in any way. They, they've got to fo two things. A, they should be focusing on all of the safety aspects of things, but two, they should be enjoying that first experience. And I think, you know, even now as professional photographers, I make sure that I put my camera down and enjoy what's going on around. <laughs> changes, the, changes the vibe, doesn't it, when you, I know. It I mean. does, exactly, exactly. So, yeah. you know, you've got to balance that enjoyment with, you know, having something to show other people your experience or relive that experience. But yeah, safety has to come first. Beautiful. Wow. Okay, any, any of our stalkers want to ask a question out there? Call them stalkers. Well, they called themselves stalkers yesterday. <laughs> um, does anyone want to ask an underwater photography question or anything else, to be fair? Uh, we'll, we'll have a nut while we're waiting. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, we're back at four anyway to talk about diving and dive travel and, uh, and underwater photography if people want to. Um, if they're less shy then. Beautiful. Good That's to meet you, Elliot. Good meet you. Good uh, good Elliot. And everyone else, thanks for joining Tessa. us. And um, Tessa, thank you for asking, or at least chatting with us on, on the side though. It was good to meet you. Um, if you want to hear us babble on about more stuff, we'll be back at four. Excellent. All right, everyone. Thanks Cheers. Bye. Yeah, good to meet you.